Welcome to another video, my AP Calc Champions. In this problem, we're going to be talking about particles. So in this first problem, we say the velocity of a particle p moving along the x-axis is given by the differentiable function of v of p, where v of p of t is measured in meters per hour and t is measured in hours. Selected values of v of p of t are shown in the table above. Particle p is at the origin at time t equals zero. Part A says justify why there must be at least one time t for t is between 0.3 and 2.8, at which v prime of p of t, the acceleration of particle p, equals 0 meters per hour per hour. What we're looking at is we're looking at this sort of range here between time t equals 0 0.3 hours and t equals 2.8 hours. Um, and something you might notice is that v of p of t at both of those times are 55. They're equal to each other. If we wanted to apply our mean value theorem, that would be a really good thing to use for this problem. Basically what the mean value theorem says is if f of x is continuous on a, b and differentiable on a, b, then there is some c such that f prime of at c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. If we go ahead and we set b equal to 2.8 and a equal to 0 0.3, we can try to use our mean value theorem. v of p of b minus v of p of a over b minus a. This should be equal to 55 minus 55 over 2.8 minus 0 0.3, so that would be zero. By the mean value theorem, we know that there is going to be some v prime of t such that it's gonna equal zero. Why are we able to use the mean value theorem? Well, our problem says that this function is differentiable and is given from zero to four. Since it's differentiable, that assumes that it has to be continuous as well. So both of these two things are true. Since v of p of t is differentiable, it is also continuous by the mean value theorem. You can go ahead and just abbreviate it. There is guaranteed to be some t for 0 0.3s in between t's in between 0.8 for which v of prime of p of t is equal to zero. And that should be about it for part A. Part B says use a trapezoid sum with three subintervals, 0 to 0 0.3, 0 0.3 to 1.7, and 1.7 to 2.8 to approximate the value of the integral from 0 to 2.8 of v of p of t dt. So what we're doing here is we're calculating the area under the curve, but instead of using maybe a triangle or a rectangle, we're gonna be using trapezoids. One thing we should talk about is the area of a trapezoid. So trapezoids look like this, where they have one base length, another base length, and then they have a height. And to get the area of it, it would be one half times base one plus base two times height. So we can use that to find the area under our curve. So I went ahead and I graphed these points that are in our data table. This graph is just for the purposes of showing how I'm building up these trapezoids. Uh, this isn't guaranteed to be what the curve looks like. So uh, take this with a grain of salt, but because the curve could be doing like any sort of random stuff. I've just sort of connected the dots a little bit. But yeah, I'm basically just using this to show you how to set up your trapezoids. Do not rely on this being like what the curve looks like. So our trapezoidal sum, we're gonna be making trapezoids, yippee. So for each of these trapezoids, we're gonna have our, our height be the length between one point and another. So for our first trapezoid, it's gonna be the length between zero and 0 0.3. So our first length is gonna be 0 0.3. And then for each of our bases, our first base is going to be v of p of t at the first number in our subinterval, and b2 is going to be v of p of t for the second number in our subinterval. So for this first one, v of p of t of 0 is actually 0, so we're not going to have any, our b of 1 is going to be 0, so we're actually going to be making effectively a triangle um, because our b of 2 is going to be v of p of t of 0 0.3, and that's going to be up at 55. So this is what our first that trapezoid looks like. Uh, it's really more of a triangle, uh, but we're going to be using the same equation, one half b1 plus b2 times h. It's just that one of these b's is going to be zero. So we're effectively, you know, doing one half b times height, which is the area of a triangle. 
not super important. So yeah, that's what our first one's going to look like. Our second one is a little bit wonky because now we have a number that's below our x-axis. So it's actually going to be split up into these two triangles like this. We're still going to be using that same equation, 1 half b1 plus b2 times height. It just looks a little bit wonkier. And then for our third trapezoid, the same thing is going to happen where we have these two sub triangles. All right. So that's sort of just like a visual of what's going on. So you can kind of understand. So let's go ahead and actually solve it out. So the integral from 0 to 2.8 of v of p of t should be equal to, so we're going to split this up into area from 0 to 0 0.3, area from 0 0.3 to 1.7, and area from 1.7 to 2.8 using our trapezoid equation. So our first one is going to be 1 half times b1, b1 is 0 plus b2, b2 is 55, times the height. The height is defined as the difference between the first number in the subinterval and the second number in the subinterval. So this is going to be 0 0.3 minus 0, so this is going to be 0 0.3. So that is going to be the area of the first trapezoid. I'm going to make these smaller just because I think I'm going to run out of space. All right, so our second trapezoid, we're going to have that 1 half. Our b1 is now, we're looking at uh, the 55. Right, so that would be this up here, and we are now we are adding b2, which will be minus 29. So this is our b2 here, and it's down here, and then we're multiplying that by the height, which will be the difference between the numbers in this sub interval. So that would be 1.4. Moving on to the next trapezoid, we're gonna have one half times, uh, we're now looking at minus 29 as our first b1, and then we're adding b2, which will be 55, and then we're multiplying it by the height, which will be the difference between 2.8 and 1.7, so that'll be 1.1. And that should be the calculations for this problem. Go ahead and just plug this into our calculator, and we would get 40.75 as the trapezoidal sum with those three subintervals. Moving on to the next problem. In this problem, we're being told that a second particle q also moves along the x-axis, so that its velocity for uh, t is between zero and four is given by v of q of t, which is given here, meters per hour. Find the time interval during which the velocity of particle q is at least 60 meters per hour. Find the distance traveled by particle q during the interval when the velocity of particle q is at least 60 meters per hour. All right, so we were given a lot of information there, so let's see how it all boils down. So we need to find the time interval during which the velocity of the particle Q is at least 60 meters per hour. So what this sounds like we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to set our V of Q of T, 45 times the square root of T times cosine of 0.063 T squared equal to 60. We're gonna find when that happens, and it looks like that happens at t equals 1.8661 and t equals 3.5191. And then if we were to graph v of q of t, the time interval during which it is at least 60 meters per hour will be 1.8661 and 3.5191. So between these two time periods, our velocity is at least 60 meters per hour. So this is going to be the first answer to our problem. The second answer asks us to find the distance traveled by the particle. With this, we're going to want to take some time to discuss the difference between displacement, displacement and distance. So displacement, the equation is defined as a of b of f of t dt, and this is defined as our change in position. This is different from the distance because distance, what we do is we, is we take the absolute value of f of t and then we take the integral of that. Why does this matter? Well, it matters because say for example, I was, I was home and I was trying to walk to the store. Okay, I started at home 
and then let's say I walked to the store, and then let's say I walked back. So my displacement at the end of this whole excursion would have been zero, right? I didn't actually, I didn't move. But my distance would be two times whatever the length it is to walk to the store. Because first I walked to the store and then I walked back. So in this situation, we want to be finding the distance. So we're going to want to take the integral of the absolute value of v of q of t. And why are we taking the the integral of the absolute value of v of q of t? The reason why is the integral of velocity is distance or displacement based on if you take the absolute value or not. So we want to find it specifically we want to find the distance traveled during the interval it's at least 60 meters per hour. Well, ding ding ding, we just found that up here, so we would do we would use those as our bounds. Uh, what that's going to look like is the integral from 1.8661 to 3.5191 of 40 times the square root of t cosine of, of this cosine 0.063 t squared dt. And it looks like this is going to be 106.109 meters. That is going to be our final answer. Uh, one thing to point out here, I made this whole fuss about displacement of distance, is that you don't actually even really need to take the absolute value because v of q of t was greater than zero the whole time on the interval. But I would always urge you to consider the difference between displacement and distance because this won't always be the case that it's it's greater than zero. It may be negative at some point. So make sure you know the difference between displacement and distance. That's all I'm going to say. Moving on to our last problem, we've got at time t equals zero, particle q is at position x equals minus 90. Using the result from part b in function b of q from part c, approximate the distance between particles p and q at time t equals 2.8. We're being told that position of q at zero is minus 90. Do we know what the position of p is at zero? Well, yeah, we do. It was actually in the problem, it was told that particle p is at the origin at time t equals zero. So what that means is the position of p at zero is going to be zero. So we want to know the distance between particles p and q at time t equals 2.8. So what this sounds like is we're going to want to find the position of q at 2.8 and also the position at of p at 2.8 and we're going to want to subtract the two to get what the distance between them is. Distance between. So how are we going to find the position of P at 2.8? Well, we're going to use our position at T equals zero as our starting point. We could write this as P, the position of P at zero plus, we can just use the integral from zero to 2.8 of v of p of t dt because that will give us the position of particle p at time t equals 2.8. So this is going to be 0 plus, if this looks familiar, you might be like, oh, didn't we do that in part b? You'd be absolutely correct. We approximated the integral from 0 to 2.8 of v of p of t using our trapezoidal sum. So we're actually going to be using our answer to solve for this problem. So we already have this is 40.75. So 0 plus 40.75 is 40.75. So that is going to be the position of P at time t equals 2.8. Now let's solve for P of Q at 2.8. Once again, we're going to be using the position of Q at time equals 0 as our starting point and then adding the displacement. So that would be the area under the curve from 0 to 2.8 of V of Q of T dt. For this one, since we were given that in part C, and I've copied it down here, we can just plug that into our calculator. So we're going to get minus 90 plus the integral from 0 to 2.8 of 45 times the, times the square root of t cosine of 0 0.063 t squared dt. So we're going to get that the position of q at time t equals 2.8 is equal to 45.9376. We have those two positions. They 
if we have our x-axis, let's say that our particle P is around here, P, and our particle Q is almost to 46, but not quite. So what we're looking for, what we're trying to solve in this problem is the distance between the two. So we would just subtract the two numbers. So 45.9376 minus 40.75 which is, should be equal 5.188 meters as our answer for part D. Hopefully this helps you out with this AP calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.